we agreed before the episode to to also touch upon the the recent uh, uh, events that has been that have been present in the media with the recent investment by by Blackstone and then uh, alongside Natalie Portman and Oprah and, and the likes and um, uh, that created a bit of a stir uh, among uh, Oatly lovers and and people in general um, in both ways. There's there's been an active discussion. I've been following it on, on social media a bit and and read statements from from different medias and different plant-based influencers yeah. and, and Oatly's statement as well. And and it's been a very interesting discussion to follow in many ways. But yeah, you know, can I and, and and sort of set the table for this a bit? Like it's it's uh, the discussion has been there, but the, this sort of entrepreneurial perspective of the 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 insides of the decision-making process and and whatever goes into a company with such a I guess a reformist human ideal entering into this big game of 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 old values and old uh, sort of traditions and 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 habits and such like of course there's going to be some resistance so there hasn't been much discussion into the sort of interplay of this dynamic no because it's so hard for everyone to see like like i i someone told me about like there was a finnish brand you know all these like brand experts, they, they know nothing about brands. I don't know why they could be brand experts, but they're like, they didn't even do <laughs> I don't their know who research. They are. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like they didn't even do their research. They didn't know what they were getting into. And we spent five months in like philosophical discussions of analysis and 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 thought going into it. I think I think one of the I mean, obviously we knew there would be a backlash to this because it's not a a very it's not like the obvious decision. I think the root of this has to, a lot to do with the fact that people don't trust companies. <laughs> like the mm. trust for a company is very, very low. And along comes Oatly. And there's a feeling like we didn't build up like customers. We built up like, like we call it, you know, like a cult, but we built up actually like friends. Like it's a, it's a movement. And so all of a sudden the movement makes a very weird decision to go to private equity. Now, everyone doesn't understand that most private equity is, they have the investments everywhere and all the evil things in the world. And uh, unfortunately, not all the good things, but uh, why could you make that decision? <laughs> like, why would you do that? And our thought process was, and then this is this is something that, that I think if people think through it a little bit, they, they'll understand, or maybe they won't understand was, um, we are falling behind on the global uh, initiatives and the goals to save the planet. Like we have to, we have to cut things in half, the greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. We're fucking that up. We're not even close. I mean, we we're focused on COVID and we're focused on partying or having a you know getting out in the sun or whatever it may be, going to the sauna, whatever you want to do. We're not focused on that. And so we look at it and say we aren't going to make it. The second thing is, is we're not going to make it unless the huge mass amounts of capital stream in the world actually shift and start helping us. So if you look at those two things, um, there is nothing more important for Oatly to do than to find a way to shift those capital streams. So we're this amazing investment opportunity and all we're doing is we're going to exploit that moment and use that to inspire capital. There's four trillion US dollars in private equity in the world. And a very, very, very small fraction of that goes to green investments. Yeah. If I'm so it goes to coal and it goes to pipelines yeah. and it goes to gas. And so if you want to actually move that. So what's better? Let's say you have four trillion. Everything that goes from that, that goes over to something green, ultimately has to be a win. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like it's 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 quite simple. That is a win. If you if you if I were to say to you, if someone's to give two hundred million dollars to Greenpeace, Blackstone, two hundred million dollars to Greenpeace, would that be cool? And you'd be like, fuck, oh, yeah, what, really? Yeah, yeah, I can't trust like, Greenpeace that, anymore. Yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I can't trust Greenpeace anymore. Now they're evil. <laughs> no, but you would say that's great. Like it's going from there and it's going to Greenpeace. That's basically what's happened. The only problem is no one's going to mm. give it to Greenpeace because it's a donation. They need to be able to turn a profit on that. 
because private equity has to meet their four or five percent. You know, they have to like it's it's your pension fund and my pension fund. Mm. You know, it's like this. That's what they're working on. So so our thing is, it's yeah. like if you can show them that there's a different way, that there's a different direction that will inspire others to do the same and will start to move the capital and therefore come closer to actually meeting those, those, you know, cutting, cutting carbon emissions by 50%. Yeah. In a, in a very big way, this is a, this is a very sort of nice, it's also contemporary. It's a nice sort of example of how to, uh, well, first of all, how to do this, uh, this sort of transition, but then also to explain that we are in a transitional point in in the world right now, and for things to transition, for four trillion dollars to transition one, from one place to another, it takes time and it goes incrementally, and these incremental <coughs> movements uh, yeah. will happen in some sort of space of compromise. Is that kind of? But what not you're if saying? we. No, but yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, so how is it going to happen? Right. Like, how yeah. are you going to get it to move? It yeah. does not going to move by itself. If everyone's content, it's not going to move. So if you're going to do like massive transformative societal change, you've got to have friction and yeah. you've got to realize that it's not going to be easy. Change is like, change is like the hardest thing of all. Think about it. Oakley's been sitting on the outside, just hitting the system. We're punching in a little bit. We're writing on our packages. It says the, the, um, the reckless pursuit of profit should be criminal. Think about that. That's yeah. on our package in 2014. The reckless pursuit of, should be considered criminal. So we're punching on the outside all the time. And you punch and you punch and you punch. And it's like, oh, this is great. We've achieved this. But we don't feel like we want to be able to look in the mirror and say, fuck, we're actually doing something. Like we're not stepping up unless we try to change the system even more. And yeah, so now we're like taking penetrating the monolith looks like this kind of yeah it's like you we're taking a step you know a, we're taking a step on the inside you know and once you right, make the yeah. commitment that we're going to take the step on the inside and fight on the inside too is there any place better to go than into the belly of the beast like straight into the number one private equity company in the world blackstone and right. if we can achieve um, change there i mean no matter how small that change may be it will grow and inspire and create other changes. We might never be able to, to, to measure it. We will never get credit for it. It doesn't matter. It's just you've got to take these bolder steps in order to actually create that change. And I, I think some of the backlash to this is, is ironically <laughs> the same people who want the same thing. You know, it's like, mm. it's like we want the same thing. We want to save the planet. It's just that it's like, oh, no, you can't do that by taking that money. It's like it, it's I, I understand this because I, I personally don't like companies. I don't like the capitalistic system. I hated the New York Yankees all my life because they were the baseball <laughs> team with the biggest budget. And, the you know, you know, it's like if you are that way and you're working in the system, um, I, I think you need this, you need the friction, you know? So I understand the people who, who feel like we've, um, that they don't understand the decision. I, I totally understand with them because I, I myself put companies into kind of good and bad.